hi guys and welcome back to my channel today i'm gonna try and be as real as i can with you guys i'm gonna be opening up which is not an easy thing for me to do i don't like speaking about myself i don't like opening up um, and being vulnerable in front of people but i really feel it's something that i need to share i want to speak about my insecurities and the low self-esteem that i've been struggling with for many many years i want to talk about where i think it all started and how i've overcome it um, and how I deal with it nowadays and in that way hopefully I can um, open up this whole conversation where we can share our insecurities and help each other to grow um, stronger through talking about it and being open about these things. Now thinking back to when I started school I can remember I was a confident bubbly little girl. I always did well at school, my marks were good, um, I had lots of friends and I was always chosen as the class captain. So I did well at school. Now towards the end of apartheid in 1994, we were allowed to attend ex-model C schools. So in 1996, my parents decided to move my brother and I to an ex-model C school. Now just to give you some history, I grew up in a small town in the Eastern Cape. And I think sometimes things are different in smaller towns than what they are in the cities. But anyway, when we started at that school in 1996, I can remember we were literally a handful of colored children that started at that school. I can remember we used to sit together during break times while the other children played. And all of this created a sense of confusion and insecurity within me because we were treated differently to everybody else. Those children didn't want to play with us. We were made to feel like outsiders at that time. Um, and also we looked different. We were different to them, you know. Um, our skin color was different, our hair was different, the way we spoke was different. So we had to change and do things so that we could fit in. We changed our hair, we changed the way we spoke, so our accents changed to sound like them and to be accepted by them. And this created a lot of confusion within me. Also with the budding teenage hormones that were just starting out, you know. Um, and it created a sense of me not being beautiful because we were not being represented on TV at that time. So everybody else at school looked like the people on TV. So being treated as an outsider, having to change what I sounded like and what I looked like to fit in created a lot of insecurity um, and issues within me. This all continued right into high school. And by the time I got to grade 11, I had had enough and I had asked my parents again if I could change schools and go to the colored school in the town. I think that night when I asked my mother in the middle of the year that I could, if I could change schools, she just sensed the hurt and sensed all everything that was going on within me and decided that it was time for me to leave that school. So in the middle of grade 11, not the best time at all, I changed schools and I moved and I moved over to the colored school in the town. Now I wish I could tell you that I was accepted back with open arms, but I wasn't. Because now I had this thing around me that I'm sturdy, you know? You know where people think that you think you're better because you maybe don't speak like them or you don't act like them, you don't have the same slang as them, you don't come from the same place as them. Um, it's that thing around me, you know? Anyway, in grade 12, I was chosen as a prefect that year, bearing in mind I had just started at the school the year before. So that was obviously an issue for the, my fellow pupils. They had a meeting even, in secret meeting, to discuss the whole issue. Issue was taken to the principal, you know. So that made me feel left out again, out in the cold, all alone, humiliated, whatever. But anyway, I continued as a prefect that year. When I finished school was the best thing. I moved away from home to go study. And for me, the most exciting thing was I could now reinvent myself because no one knew who I was, no one knew who I, where I came from, and I could basically just try and be myself. But the problem with that was I was so confused that I didn't even know who I was, you know, by the time I got there. So I um, tried to fit in as best as I could. I was always up for a party, I was always agreeing with everything people were saying and I was always just trying to please everybody so that they would like me and accept me and I could have friends and whatever. But by the time I started working, I was quite a confused, insecure person and I started withdrawing and I grew distant from everybody else. I started building up my walls quite high to protect myself um, and I really didn't open up to anybody else. Thinking back now about everything that 
I've been through and um, how I feel now. You know, I can relate and I know exactly how it feels to walk into a room and not be liked. You feel it, you sense it, it makes your skin crawl and you feel so uncomfortable that you can't even breathe. I know how it feels to walk into a room and be made to feel left out. I know how it feels to walk into a room and not even be noticed at all. For years, I've been struggling with this fly on the wall complex, as I call it. It's where I would be with a group of people, but I would be so scared to actually say anything or I would just say the bare minimum. You just watch as the conversation flows by because you're so scared of saying anything because out of fear of how it would be perceived or what people will think about you that you rather rather just leave them to talk amongst themselves um, and you continue just to feel left out in 2013 I attended a church conference and on the last day of the conference a guy walked up to me and asked me if he could speak to me and I said yes he started saying to me that he could sense my pain and he could feel exactly what I've been through what blew my mind is he could actually mention a specific incident that happened at school where this girl, very popular, was actually being quite rude to me and actually she, was, she grabbed me by the throat in front of everybody. And it's something that I have never even thought of again. I completely have just, I think, purposely forgotten it. And he continued to speak through it with me and he prayed over me and with me about it and we just asked God for healing and um, that I could deal with it and, and we rebuked this complex that I had around me, this fly on the wall complex that I had um, and it was amazing. I felt so much better after that but it wasn't the end of the road. In the weeks that followed God brought so many memories back into my mind. Things that I have forgotten or things that I have chosen to not remember um, he just brought it all back to me. Things that I needed to deal with. People I needed to forgive. Things that I needed to remember so that I could get over them. It wasn't an easy process, but it was so necessary for me to get the healing that I needed. Slowly but surely, I started coming out of my shell. When I was with people, I started talking a little bit more. I started reaching out to people. I started just being myself again or learning who I was again. Um, it's not an easy process. I still have my up days and my down days. There are days that I really don't want to speak to anybody. Um, then there are days where I am confident and I can. So it's really still a process, a healing process um, that's happening right now. But having gone through that, has actually there was a purpose to having gone through that. Because now when I'm with people, I can immediately sense when someone is feeling left out. I can immediately sense when someone feels insecure in that space that they are in right now. And that immediately alerts me to reach out to that person and try and make them feel welcome and try and make them feel a little bit more comfortable in where they are at that moment in time. So there's always a purpose to our pain. It's not nice to go through it, but there's always a purpose at the end of the day for things that we go through. So to anyone that can relate or is struggling with low self-esteem, take it to God. He can heal you. He can make you come out of your shell. He can make you feel so much better about yourself and make you confident within yourself. So pray for healing. Forgive people that you need to forgive and try and just push through the pain so that you can become who He intended you to be. I hope this video helps somebody out there. Please comment and let me know what you're struggling with or DM me if you um, are, don't want to comment on there. And as a community, we can try and help each other so that we can get through our insecurities and things that make us feel um, like we're less than everybody else. I hope this video has helped. Take care. Bye.